So this is like the fifth time I've recorded this video today. I guess I'm just blowing it in multiple ways. You blew it! Yeah, you got that right. Thanks, thanks, Adam. I, uh, yeah, I did. I blew it. I need to do something. I need to do this for Listen myself. Listen to me, you I, def I offered you a chance when we could have done something, and you blew it! If you guys remember, I made a video predicting the Nintendo Switch would sell 3.7 million in November. Well, I wrote a book, too. A little something called, wish it, want it, you blew it. I was wrong. I said the uh, PlayStation 5 would sell 2.2 million in November. Really? Yep. Let me read your next part. You wish you were a millionaire. You want more money. Guess what? You blew it. I was also wrong about that. Oh, I also said the Xbox Series X slash S would sell 2.3 million. Ha! Knock, knock. Who's there? You blew it. You blew it who? You blew it bad. You know what the last page in the book is? A mirror. So you can see exactly who blew it being you. I was wrong about that. Is it going to be the last time I ever make sales predictions? Ha! No. <laughs> but I was right about one thing. The Nintendo Switch was the best-selling platform. Let's just look at the MPD reports. Then we'll talk about it. So this, you know, Matt Piscatella, he works for the MPD, does all the video game stuff. I uh, got, got it all gathered up here on NeoGAF. It says, uh, US MPD hardware, PlayStation 5 was November's best-selling hardware platform in consumer spending, while well, Nintendo Switch led the marketing unit sold. PlayStation 5 achieved the highest launch month, unit and dollar sales for a video game hardware platform in US history. The records were previously held by PlayStation 4. Um, and then you go down here to DualSense, wireless controller achieved the highest launch month. Unit dollar sales for a gamepad in US history. So basically, it's the best launch of a controller ever in the history of controllers. Uh, Nintendo Switch, as I said on top. Well, Nintendo released a statement on Business Wire, and it says uh, they, they sold over 1.35 million units in November. We know that PlayStation 5 had more, made more money, but sold less units, but also beat the PlayStation 4 record, which means it sold somewhere between 1.1 and 1.35 million for PlayStation 5, making it the best console debut in, in history, in the U.S. anyways. Uh, as for Xbox, it didn't outsell the Xbox One. Initial reports said that it outsold the Xbox One, but I think maybe that was just based on the fact that it was sold out everywhere and a presumption that they had shipped enough units. The Xbox One sold about 900,000 units during its launch month, it sold less than that. We don't have exact figures, but it looks like around 700,000 or so Xbox Series S's slash X's were sold. Again, Microsoft doesn't give sales data for their systems anymore. Uh, and you might look at that as, ha, 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 poor little Microsoft. Oh, what a, what a loser. What a loser. It beat the really crappy, poorly marketed Xbox One bundled with Kinect. <laughs> well, it's not that simple. You see, uh, the Xbox One only launched in 12 territories. So there was a lot more units allocated to the United States, whereas the Xbox Series X slash S launched in 22 territories. So when you have 10 extra territories involved, clearly you're going to have less units to go around, and that's going to impact the United States, which is your primary market. The thing is, every single unit that has come off the manufacturing lines from both Microsoft and Sony has sold out. So there really isn't bad news here. Yeah, PlayStation 5 set records. Congrats. Sony was able to get enough units made to set records. If Microsoft had produced another 300, 400,000 systems, they might have sold out as well. Now, the reality is both platforms are selling out like crazy. Xbox Series S -S -S isn't suddenly selling less right now because it didn't have Halo Infinite. That is something that I've seen some people pass around on the internet. This is what happens when you don't have exclusives. PlayStation has exclusives. There is no exclusives for Xbox Series X -S -S. Ergo, the PlayStation 5 is killing it in sales. But they're both selling out of everything they can make. It's just, this Microsoft is spreading their stock out around more places. That's what's really happening. Uh, so that is really what we have for the sales data. Uh, Nintendo obviously on top for two straight years now. Winning November means they have now won the MPD in terms of unit sales for 24 straight months. And it does look like PlayStation 5 and Switch are going to be like the pillars of, of, of the top tier of the gaming sales pile for at least the next year through 2021. And then we'll see what happens, how, how much longer Nintendo can keep this momentum of Switch going. Switch revision potentially coming out, all that jazz. Microsoft, obviously we don't know what's going to happen there. 
we're probably not going to get a sales update maybe ever really again. Um, but we'll, uh, the MPD will at least always tell us if it happens to, you know, outsell PlayStation or Nintendo, maybe because the MPD report didn't really have much for Xbox in it. So I think that, uh, in the end, everyone's probably going to win. It's just when it comes to units, switch and PlayStation will be on top. PlayStation five is clearly going to be a hundred million seller. Can we just say that right now? Like, I know that sounded crazy when people were talking, you know, in the early days of Switch, like in 2017. Oh man, this could this could outsell the Wii. Why well, it's gonna outsell the Wii? The Switch is gonna outsell the Wii. It's very it it would be an astronomical drop off for Switch not to outsell the Wii. But every Sony platform except for one has sold like like home console anyway has sold over 100 million units. The one that didn't was the overpriced, poorly marketed PlayStation Three. And that sold 80 million, which would have been better than any other Nintendo home console ever released until we came out. So, yeah, pretty confident you could just say PlayStation 5 is going to be another 100 million seller. Uh, and it's interesting because obviously Xbox Series X, S, I think, has the best budget offering, not just in terms of the S, but y you kind of get that Game Pass in there, uh, which is really makes gaming affordable. But again, different strokes for different folks. Uh, PlayStation 5, uh, despite some some launch issues, I think every platform has had launch issues. Switch did. Xbox Series X S hasn't been perfect either. I mean, there's been disc errors and issues with the with the Series X in particular. I haven't seen it happen to my Series X, but you know, your mileage always varies on these issues. Uh, overheating for some people with PlayStation 5. I get it's, it varies. Most of these issues are like a very small, less than five percent of the audience. So. I honestly think that both platforms are going to do fantastic. All three platform holders are going to do, be really happy by the end of 2021. Uh, and that's that. Uh, I think that's good. Now, in terms of other sales data, we got some sales data on Cyberpunk. Uh, some people might care about that because it's maybe, besides Animal Crossing, the biggest launch of this year. I mean, some people will say Ghost of Tsushima, Last of Us Part Two. I Yes, obviously huge launches um, and, and really big sellers. Mile Morales, really big seller. I think top sale, the uh, top sale selling game of November was Call of Duty Cold War, followed by Miles Morales, followed by Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Well, I think Assassin's Creed Valhalla was number two, and then it was. I don't. It doesn't really matter. I mean, pandemic things are selling well. I have some data on Cyberpunk. Eight million pre-orders, um, and they've already made back all the money they have spent on the game and marketing just off pre-orders. So. That includes physical and digital across all platforms. Uh, Cyberpunk is a game I'm stoked to play. I'm going to be playing it on Xbox Series X. Um, apparently, it runs better on Xbox Series X than PlayStation 5. That's what early performance metrics are showing. Clearly, the game seems to be built for PC because there's a lot of bugs in the, in the Series X, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, PlayStation 4. It doesn't really matter. Any home console version of it seems to be buggy, whereas the PC version seems to be running much better, even on, like you know, not necessarily top tier cards. Like, you know, I have a 5,700 XT and a Ryzen 2700 X. I've seen other people with a similar setup and the game's actually running pretty well for them without the same glitches and bugs. So it's almost like they've made it for PC, targeting PC, and then, you know, try to, you know, port it to everything else. And obviously not, not maybe shocking, maybe not surprisingly, considering that PC looks like it was the main platform that uh, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, the base consoles, are having the worst issues, the worst bugs, uh, whereas Series X and PlayStation 5 have less bugs. But they're not technically PlayStation 5 and Series X versions of the games. They are running in backwards compatibility mode on both platforms, which means they're just the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One versions, just with, you know, the, the frame rate and resolutions unlocked and stuff like that. When they're actually optimized and we get the next gen patches they should probably run significantly better uh but it's interesting to see that the majority market that's going to buy the game is uh having issues and you want to know how big this game is see pc gaming is a big deal uh but a lot of pc gamers are spread across a wide a wide swath of games um we don't really all come together and congregate around a single game 
That is unless you're Cyberpunk 2077. It had over 1 million concurrent players on launch day on Steam, which is by far a record, by, by like 400,000 players or something. That's a record on Steam, which is not the only way to get the game, by the way, on, on PC. It also had like a million or 2 million people watching it on Twitch on launch day. Again, I think at the, at the time of recording right now, it's over 450,000 people watching it on Twitch. It's, it's become instantly one of the most streamed games, most watched streamed games as well. So... Yeah, um, big game, big sales, big sales for everyone all around. Uh, and yeah, as soon as I get that, that that cash money, you know, I'll be I'll be getting that cyberpunk and doing some streams of it myself because I'm very interested in this game. I loved prior games from CD Projekt Red, so why not give this one a shot as well? All right, folks, I'm Nathaniel Rubblejance from Nintendo Prime. I'm gonna go play some Immortals: Phoenix Rising because I really want to wrap that up before I dive into another big game uh cyberpunk's a significantly bigger game than immortals uh, i am playing that on switch i'm loving the switch version so take that for what it is and uh yeah i'll catch you guys in the next video